This week's genius recipe is for a streamlined version of a traditional Vietnamese dish, and it is astonishingly flavorful for how little time it cooks. There's still no chicken in that introduction. <laughs> it's, it's chicken. <laughs> You're gonna love it. We are so lucky to have the creator of this recipe, Charles Fan here, the owner and chef behind the Slanted Door restaurant in San Francisco, to show us how to make it and tell us the story behind this recipe. Thank you for picking me up off the Manhattan Street and putting <laughs> yes. me up here randomly. Thank you. That's really was, happy to be here. We were going to try and do a FaceTime with you because I thought you were in San Francisco, and then it just turns out... I'm just walking down the street, <laughs> 26. Just snagged him. And 6th Avenue. Thank you for having me. This is um, one of the dishes we serve a lot. It's it's a very classic Vietnamese style called, uh, they call it call, uh, mean dry braise, it's a braise. So you can do it with pork, chicken, and shrimp. Um, and it's meant to be a little salty and sweet mm -hmm. and you eat with a lot of rice and vegetables. Traditionally, you would burn the sugar and just make it a little bit more complicated, mm -hmm. but I, I made it really simple. You just put them all together and combine and, and heat up the sauce. I like everything really thin and mm -hmm. julienne. So I'm just gonna... And we have chili, but if you, in Arizona, you get jalapeno, that works too. Mm -hmm. but I actually made this the other night with a sliced up jalapeno and it was incredibly spicy and very tasty. Yeah, and some jalapeno is not spicy. Mm -hmm. So it's just the luck of the draw, right? Mm -hmm. I think that the, the the thinness of the dish, it, I mean, the ingredient is kind of important. So for those who don't, can't cut really well, and, and this is a little hard because it's kind of fibrous mm -hmm. ginger, right? So I noticed you you partially peeled it. Is that what you usually like to do? Yeah, I can't do that on camera. Too much, so. <laughs> do you do you prefer to have it like I, I really, really peeled or do you? I don't it, really care. Like yeah. I I kind of like it a little bit of it and. I think part of cooking is just not fret over everything perfect. Uh -huh. Life's never perfect in the while, and it's kind of nice to get a little bit of, I kind of like the irregularity mm -hmm. of things. So we have some thigh meat that's been deboned and no skin, but I encourage people to eat a little skin, just eat a little less chicken. I need to pitch in. We got black pepper in here. There's a lot of black pepper in this recipe, and it's, I mean, it's in the name of the recipe, for one thing. But also, um, I really like grinding it in a mortar and pestle because I don't love like grinding and grinding and grinding. Do you, do you uh, I approve? actually love eating black pepper whole, oh. right? Especially like curry. It's like getting a little present every now and then because it just blow up in your mouth. <laughs> okay, so I'll just crush it a little bit. Yeah, then. you just pound some and some you don't. You just grab it by your hand and again, kind of eyeball it. Okay. Does that look good to you or more? Let's see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit more. A little more? And do you That's think good. I should be bashing it more or just like doing this? No, no, you just bash some and just, you want to have just variety of sizes. Yeah. Could you just tell us a little bit about your, like, your background as a cook and how you launched the Slanted Door? It's such a great story and I would love for people at home to hear it. Well, I grew up in Vietnam. I came here when I was 13. Mm -hmm. I was a refugee. Came on a boat, lived in Guam, went to San Francisco. My father was a janitor for an English restaurant. So at 15 years old, 1978, I started busing tables. So I was exposed to a lot of food, but I went to school studying architecture. And, um, and I got into Berkeley. My dad, I want to be an artist. He was like, no, 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 no. You don't, we don't come all the way here to be an artist. So, mm -hmm. so I did architecture, but really at the end of the day, I really liked designing. And so after multiple career, I was in the garment business, and software. I had this idea in my head for 10 years mm -hmm. to open this modern Vietnamese restaurant to have design, but I knew the food's got to be a certain way, like the food I grew up with. So Sanador idea was born in my head for 10 years. And finally, in 94, I signed a lease and it didn't bother me. I don't know how to cook. And, and I just built the restaurant too. Like I couldn't even find a restaurant I could buy. And I decided to build it myself. And that was in 1995, we opened. I like food be part of our story. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really care about technique per se. I more care about telling you the story first. Mm -hmm. Then of course I gotta get my technique right so you don't return, ask for your money back and return at the restaurant and mm -hmm. get it taste good. 
So for me, it's like I go to Vietnam or, or I take uh, what I like and I edit it. And I pull from those things I present to you. Uh, but at the same time, I work really hard on the technique, the ingredient, and getting the food perfect to the table. Understand a story about the chicken, the dish, that how they made these things, their variation, then you really just, it's almost like taking a trip without taking a trip, you mm -hmm. know? So I, I just like to heat up the sauce, right? I put everything in. The thing is it went in the sauce, this is a good pop quiz for me. We had the dark brown sugar, a quarter cup of water, a quarter cup of fish sauce, and three tablespoons of rice vinegar. So everything is prepped and we're ready to just cook. Right, so I just put everything and heat it up. Um, essentially, you just want the sugar to be melted, that's mm -hmm. all, right? Then you start with caramelizing your, your onion. So. I like a lot of ginger. Mm -hmm. I just have a habit doing this, but you don't really need to caramelize too much because the whole sauce is gonna braise. Mm -hmm. you know? And we have these chicken cut up, um, um, like put a little oil, maybe a little salt over it. I like to add less mm -hmm. than more uh, because I want to see how much water is going to come out of there. Mm. Uh, because the chicken will produce more uh, water. And you just wait until the body thing's cooked. So that will that help get some of the moisture out of the chicken by yeah, not just kind of drowning it in all the sauce at once? It'll come out either way. Okay. But if you've got too much liquid, then your sauce is not gonna have nice consistency. Mm. Then it would just be kind of watery. Okay, when you opened the slanted door, you had cooked only really for your family, right? You hadn't cooked in restaurants before. Yeah, I cooked for a few party people coming oh. in my loft. Mm -hmm. Got a little drunk and a friend <laughs> thought the door was slanted, but the whole wall was slanted. That's where the name came from? Mm -hmm. This is when I was living in downtown Oakland. Mm -hmm. um, just brainstorming and just it was just crazy, had this crazy idea, had no idea what I was doing. It was just like an art project. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like an actual real business. So we wanted like fancy wine and fancy tea and we didn't want to follow any tradition. Mm -hmm. And so when you heard Slanted Door, did something just click? That's what you wanted yeah, to name it? Yeah, at first we were like, oh my God, that's just so racist. <laughs> <Give me a break. laughs> <laughs> and, and it, but we didn't want to have a Chinese, like a Vietnamese name or some mm -hmm. sort of thing. We don't want you to have an idea of what you're coming to. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is the space, it's modern, it's got European wine, and dessert, but Chinese tea, but we have Vietnamese food. Mm -hmm. I knew that, like, didn't want people to stereotype when they come, so they can't, since I can't cook, so they can't expect a real restaurant. <laughs> this is a door company or something. <laughs> like, what exactly you do here? Uh, so that's how it came about. I think you're being modest that you couldn't cook. <laughs> I'm still winging it. <laughs> this smells unbelievable. Is that, um, this is not any better than any version you made, right? It's the same, right? Oh, well, I guess we'll have to see. <laughs> I'll have to taste it. I, I have a feeling it's going to be better though. <laughs> <laughs> I had a few more practice than you did. Yeah, definitely. Typically, I would try to serve some vegetable with this, a uh, little bit of rice, it's okay, I'm very happy with just this for now. Mm. I love the little shreds of ginger, the softened shallot, these very exciting pops of peppercorn. Yeah. But you still get a lot of the peppercorn flavor too, yeah. even though it's not like contained just in the little pops. It's right. everywhere. Yeah. Next time you're just wandering down the street in Manhattan, you know where to come, right? Well, you got my cell phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll text. <laughs> For more Genius Recipes every single week, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and check out Charles's two books, The Slanted Door and Vietnamese Home Cooking, and go to his restaurants. Can you tell us all the places that your restaurants are now? Um, we're mostly in San Francisco, mm -hmm. so if you go to slanted.com, you'll find um, 
Uh, you want bourbon, it will be hard water. I got 450 bourbon. Um, we're about to open Vegas in uh, late January. Uh, Slam door Las Vegas. And, and we have out the door in a little cafe in UC Berkeley called Rice and Bones. Perfect. Where I went to school. That's so perfect. <laughs> Full circle.